Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the relative sizes of coarse particles, fine particles and nanoparticles. You should then be able to explain why nanoparticles have a high surface area to volume ratio. And finally you should be able to describe the advantages and disadvantages of using nanoparticles. And all of this work is for triple chemistry students only. Now we're going to be covering some quite challenging ideas here, so you might need to watch this video a couple of times until you're confident. Okay, we're going to start by looking at the idea of sizes in chemistry. Now we're used to using millimetres in science, and a millimetre is one thousandth of a metre. If we're using standard form, then we would say that a millimetre is one times ten to the power of minus three metres. In chemistry, a millimetre is actually a very large size. Now if we take a thousandth of a millimetre, then we've got a micrometre, and a micrometre has this symbol. In standard form, a micrometre is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres. So in other words, a micrometre is 1 millionth of a metre. Now a micrometre is pretty small, but in chemistry we'd still consider a micrometre to be a fairly big size. If we take 1 thousandth of a micrometre, then we've got a nanometre. In standard form, a nanometer is 1 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. So in other words, a nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter. A nanometer is a very useful size in chemistry. To give you an idea of that, we could fit around 4 atoms of a large element such as uranium into 1 nanometer. So in this video, we're looking at different sizes of particles. Let's start by looking at coarse particles, which are also called PM10s or dust. Coarse particles have a diameter between 1 times 10 to the power of minus 5 metres and 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres. Coarse particles contain many thousands of atoms. Fine particles are also called PM2.5 and these have a diameter between 100 and 2500 nanometres. In other words, between 1 times 10 to the power of minus 7 metres and 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres. That means that fine particles contain several thousand atoms. Lastly, nanoparticles have a diameter between 1 and 100 nanometers. This means that nanoparticles only contain a few hundred atoms, and you need to learn that. Now there is one key fact about particles which you need to remember. As the particle size decreases by 10 times, the surface area to volume ratio increases by 10 times. I'm showing you this here. Imagine a particle shaped like a cube. The length of one side is 10 units. The surface area of one side is 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100 units. We've got six sides, so the total surface area is 600 units. The volume of the cube is 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10, giving us a volume of 1,000 units. The surface area to volume ratio is 600 divided by 1000, giving us a value of 0.6. Here's another particle, but this one has sides of only one unit. The surface area of this particle is 6 units, but the volume is only one unit. Dividing 6 by 1 gives us a surface area to volume ratio of 6. So as you can see, if we decrease the side of the cube by 10 times, we increase the surface area to volume ratio by 10 times. So if we go back to the particles we looked at before, we can see that nanoparticles have a huge surface area to volume ratio. In other words, even a small amount of nanoparticles has a massive surface area. This means that we need a much smaller quantity of nanoparticles compared to materials with normal particle size, for example when we're using a catalyst. Now this property makes nanoparticles extremely useful, and I'm showing you some uses here. We've got medicines, sun creams, cosmetics, deodorants, electronics, and catalysts. Now there are some risks when using nanoparticles, especially when used in applications such as sun creams, cosmetics, and deodorants. It's possible that nanoparticles can be absorbed into the body and enter our cells. Now no one knows the potential long-term effects of this, so it's important that nanoparticles are studied and used carefully. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on nanoparticles in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the relative sizes of coarse particles, fine particles and nanoparticles. 
You should then be able to explain why nanoparticles have a high surface area to volume ratio. And finally, you should be able to describe the advantages and disadvantages of using nanoparticles.